In more than 30 years, I tried different camera settings for my landscape photography. There are some settings which don't seem to make a big difference. Uh, some other settings even <laughs> ruined my photographs. But there are also some settings which made my life as a photographer much easier. And I have to say, today, from the technical side, they even helped me to nail each of my photos all the time, just with the right camera settings. How cool is that? The best camera settings for landscape photography in this video. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I think this is one of the questions I got asked most of the time. Which camera settings I use or which is the best camera mode for landscape photography? And the question is, does something like the best camera settings exist actually? Good question, isn't it? You know, the camera is not more than a tool and depending on how you use this tool, there are settings that offer advantages. So I'm going to show you the base settings I use for my particular type of landscape photography and most importantly, why I use them in that way. There is definitely no right or wrong. Also other settings would lead to great results, but everything gets really much easier with the settings I use. Well, the basis for my base settings is the fact that the sensor of the camera can't handle each amount of light. You know, if there are areas in your composition which are too dark, there will be no details anymore there. It will just get black. And if there are areas in your composition which are too bright, there are also no details anymore there. It will just get white. So to get out a clean photograph, we have to get sure that exactly that range of light goes onto our sensor that it is able to handle. And therefore we use the exposure triangle. I keep this just quick now, just to get to the sense. We have the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. If we close the aperture one stop, we have either to go for a longer shutter speed or we increase the ISO to compensate for that one stop less light. Now, the easiest way of using a camera is so when you don't want to think about anything technical, it would be that you use the automatic mode. This is the P mode in your camera. The P mode does nothing else than measuring the amount of light and depending on that, it opens or closes the aperture. It makes the shutter speed shorter or longer. This seems to be a cool thing for beginners because you don't have to think about anything technical, but you don't have any control over your camera. And most importantly, you can't use the two stylistic bass instruments of your camera. Well, what are the two stylistic bass instruments of our camera? First of all, as a photographer, I want to have control over the depth of field. Depth of field, this means how thick the layer of sharpness is in your image or how much around your focus point is sharp. You could also call it sharp thickness, but this would not be photographer's language anymore. So depth of field. And for photographing in the grand landscape, this means vistas of mountains, lakes, hills, fields, whatever, usually we want to have everything sharp in our image from the foreground to the distance. In woodland photography, it could be that I want to have the distant elements a tiny bit softer. And this is done by depth of field. Now, the depth of field is defined by the aperture I use and the focal length of my lens. I need the right focal length for my composition and according to that, I need the right aperture to get the depth of field I need for my particular composition. Now either I have to close it more to get a higher depth of field or I have to open it more to get a shallower depth of field. And this makes the aperture to the most important stylistic instrument for my photography. I want to be the one who decides for it. And this is nothing I let the camera do for me. And this means the P mode is never an option for me. And also not the S mode, by the way. The S, is, uh, the S mode is the shutter priority. 
It is useful if you want to work with a constant shutter speed and the aperture is not important. Sports photography is a good example here. So the sleeves only, the M and the A mode for my landscape photography. M is the manual mode and A is the aperture priority. Aperture priority, uh, this means I can use a constant aperture and the shutter speed is not important. Now, the shutter speed is also a quite important stylistic instrument for my landscape photography. The longer I go with the shutter speed, the more motion blur I get into my image. And motion blur, this could be leaves moving around on a tree, grasses blowing in the wind, or floating water. It helps to bring a sense of motion into your still photographs. But it could also be that you want to freeze your photograph. And just think about woodland photography here. All the leaves are moving with the wind. And usually I want to get them pin sharp in, in the photograph, right? So this would make the manual mode to the best photography mode for landscape photography. And I have used this mode, this manual mode, for years. I mean, you have 100% control over your camera. You can decide for the right aperture, for the right shutter speed, and you just have to, to use the ISO to compensate for the right amount of light onto your sensor. And if the amount of, of light is too much, I just use an ND filter and uh, increase the ISO maybe to compensate again. I did this for years. But there is one more thing, the biggest variable in landscape photography. Well, what is the biggest variable in landscape photography? Our light source doesn't give us a constant amount of light. And in landscape photography, the sun is our light source, obviously. Surprise, surprise. And depending on how high it is up, uh, how many elements are in front of the sun, clouds maybe, or mountains, depending on that, the amount of light is totally different. And especially at sunrise or sunset, the amount of light can change extremely fast. Uh, within a few seconds, the amount of light could change between a whole stop. And I see this in my workshops. Uh, those who are using manual mode struggle massively in light situations like that. Uh, they get either overexposed or underexposed images, or they are just screwing around in the camera uh, while the best light is appearing in front of them. Of course, you could do exposure bracketing and make an HDR afterwards, but this also has disadvantages. Uh, there are moving elements maybe, or maybe some grasses are, or bushes are moving, or floating water. It will be difficult to put it together afterwards. It ca I can really, really recommend learn to get right exposed images. And as we already mentioned, the camera, it's just a tool. And as for most tools, there are easier ways and harder ways how to use them. And the easiest way to get control over the amount of light is to use the A mode, the aperture priority. And this allows me to choose the right aperture for my composition. Again, this is the most important stylistic instrument for me. And yeah, I said sometimes we need also the right shutter speed. So what I do is I really use the A mode most of the time and I use the exposure compensation and the ISO to adjust the shutter speed. If I need a longer shutter speed, I just use an ND filter. How simple is that? And of course, I try to keep the ISO as low as possible, but not lower uh, than the base ISO usually. And this is 100 on my Sony A7F4, for instance. I think I could, could go down to a 64, but usually I don't, I don't use this. I used still manual mode for waterfall photography for some years, but meanwhile, I also use the A mode there, because also with overcast weather, what I often have at, at waterfalls, the amount of light changes with the time. And we don't recognize that quick enough on, on my experience. When I take multiple exposures for getting the right patterns uh, in the water, I recognize much, much faster when the shutter speed has changed. I just have to change the exposure compensation then to get my wish shutter speed again. And ultimately, I have to say from the technical side, it usually never happens that I ruin my photographs with the wrong settings. Maybe sometimes, but I can't really remember that, to be honest. It really works for me in that way. I always use aperture priority. Not always. There's one exception. And I will tell you more about that in a minute. 
after you have given me a thumb up. You know, it helps me, it helps the algorithm, it helps other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. I would really, really appreciate this. Thank you therefore. Well, aperture priority is my preferred mode for landscape photography. By the way, leave me a comment below what your preferred mode is. And again, there is no right or wrong. I was really interested about. Well, I use the A mode and the only exception is when I'm shooting panels. You know, with panels, we have to stitch several images together. And I simply don't, or I simply want to get sure that the frames are all absolutely equally exposed and there is no difference between the frames. But this is just for panels. For all my other landscape photography, I always use aperture priority. And let me give you some additional tips here. I always shoot RAW, never JPEG. A RAW file simply contains much more information and yeah, there are really light years between a JPEG and RAW. And using RAW allows me to use automatic white balance. I really don't care about white balance when I'm out on location. And this is done afterwards in Lightroom. You know, also with the A mode, the camera has to measure the light. And therefore, I always use the matrix metering method for landscape photography. If I'm not happy with the histogram, I just bring it up or down with using exposure compensation. I use autofocus most of the time it is amazing how good autofocus has got over the years. Today it is absolutely reliable. You know, I started 1990 and my first camera didn't have autofocus and the first autofocus I have ever used, yeah, it is comparable with uh, autonom driving or something like that. It's cool, but you know that you can do it better when you drive by yourself. So today autofocus is fantastic. Now, but I don't use back button autofocus, although it were a quite good idea actually. You know, the idea of back button autofocus is that you uncouple the focus function from the shutter release button. You have an own button for focusing and when you release afterwards, it doesn't focus again. And so this is really a, a, a big advantage. And modern cameras allow you to configure that in your settings. And the only reason why I don't use this is I'm used to another quite good method and this already long before back button autofocus was invented. So if your camera shouldn't support back button autofocus, you can do it like me. After I have brought my camera into setup, I focus just by pressing the shutter release button to the half so that it focus and then I disable the autofocus on my lens. I switch to manual mode, uh, to manual focus. A quick and dirty solution, I know, I know, but I'm using this already for years and it works fantastically for me. And as focusing method, I use the flexible spot, by the way. This allows me to focus exactly there where it leads into the best possible sharpness for my photograph. And if you shouldn't know where to focus in your landscape scene to get the best possible sharpness, watch this video here. This will be really useful for you. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be.